I to sneak up on you there a little bit. <laughs> good morning, my friend, or good afternoon, actually. It's after two o'clock. It's been a kind of a weird day here in Boulder. It's super, super windy, so I caution you on the wind. I'm trying to position myself so the wind won't bother the mic too much, but uh, we know that we're not inside a building. We're outside on the street. Witnessing for Jesus Christ. Once again, thank you for being here. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me. Uh, we're at Baseline. This behind you is Baseline, and this here is Broadway. Baseline and Broadway with uh, Colorado, the University of Colorado, right across the street. Starbucks right to my right here. Uh, fire department across the street. And uh, Chautauqua Park, just a couple blocks up that way. So, uh, I tell you, uh, Boulder, Colorado, or along the front range, is not for people who uh, uh, are fair weather preachers. <laughs> it is rough all the time, it seems like, even though I sometimes can't capture it on the video. And uh, so praise God. Let's pray and we'll get started. Lord, I thank you for bringing us here uh, together on uh, with this kind of medium. We thank you, Lord, that we are praying for each other. We're praying for our family. We're praying for our children, our spouses, our uh, co-workers, our friends, our neighbors. Lord, everybody who comes in contact with us. Lord, everybody on the skip bus today. I was wonderful. I was able to make a solid witness through the whole bus. That was really wonderful, Lord. You provided that kind of opportunity. Plus downtown, being able to witness to dozens and dozens and dozens of people. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in all of our ministries, not just this ministry, but all of our ministries. And we give you all the glory, Father, for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope this works out. I don't know if it will or not with the wind. So, uh, <clears throat> So in our ministry, we have a title, structure, and foundation. Our foundation, as you know, is Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Uh, and then in that, we have our titles. Uh, the first title above us, over the foundation, is the Word of God. It's found in Revelation 19.13. And it says this in the King James, And he, the Word of God, Jesus Christ, was clothed with a vesture, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. The Word of God. It's about 25 mile an hour winds out here. God bless America. God bless Boulder. So under the Word of God, we have our seasonal title. We're in Breakthrough and Overcome. And that's found in Numbers 1330. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. We are well able to overcome the obstacles in our life. You are well able. If you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are well able to overcome whatever life throws at you, whatever people toss in your face, whatever obstacles are put before you, you are well able. You have everything it takes because you are in the Lord Jesus Christ. Being in the Lord Jesus Christ sets you apart from the rest of the world. Understand that. But understanding also, being set apart, uh, you become a light, and the light God takes and sets up on a hill, and everybody sees you, and everybody takes pot shots at you and, and knows who to attack. Everybody else and all these other religions, you don't know who they are. Uh, that's what a lot of Christians kind of hide because they don't want to be seen by other people. How sad, right? But I was walking over here after I got out of the bus and witnessed to everybody on the bus. It was just absolutely amazing what went on on the bus. That would really took me by surprise. But God takes people by surprise sometimes. And I got off the bus and walked about a block over to here. And I kept thinking, saying to the Lord, I said, Lord, I just, I'm so enjoying my life as a minister on the street. I love what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing. I absolutely love it. I can't believe any, and not everybody's doing what I'm doing. This has got to be the greatest thing anybody could do. Seriously, that's how I feel about it. And uh, yesterday was my three-year anniversary. It looks like I only got about 150 more hours, and I'll cross over 3,000 hours. It looks like uh, here and shortly I'll also cross over 700 days on the street here uh, in the next month or so. I forget exactly how many days I've got left. Uh, 
but probably in the next couple of months, I'll cross over 700 days. I think that's fantastic. Uh, 700 days and 3,000 hours, that's pretty good, I think. <laughs> Whoa, I don't blow over myself. So under the Word of God, under the Breakthrough is our weekly title. It changes every Sunday. And that Sunday title is May 29th Sunday Prayer Letter. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Revelation 19, 14. That's where our title comes out of. Our title for our Sunday prayer letters comes out of the Word of God. It is the Word of God. That's what we say. <laughs> the Word of God. <laughs> this is crazy, isn't it? So, <laughs> welcome to Boulder. I feel like I got to apologize, but I don't know what else to do. I'm going to do this video, period. <laughs> and I'm uh, sorry, a lot of people don't get a chance to listen because of all the noise of the wind, but that's life on the street. <clears throat> I'm not going to go into a building and do my sermons. I'm going to do my sermons right where I do the banner. But as you know, I can't lift a 10 foot banner in this 25 mile an hour wind. It won't hold up. But I lift the word of God high above my head and I lift my other hand and I march back and forth here and I make a spectacle of myself and people notice who I am, just like when I got on the bus. People know him. <laughs> like that guy. <laughs> you know, anyways, so, uh, so in our Sunday prayer letter, we have a verse for every, every day of the week, starting on Sunday all the way to Saturday, seven days we have. And I call these uh, days, Two, Monday, part two on Monday is um, what? Tar, part two on Monday is Matthew six thirty one. It's the first time uh, this word clothed is mentioned. So on our week, uh, if you saw yesterday's video, uh, in the title, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, we're highlighting. The Holy Ghost is having me highlight uh, four words uh, that we're going through this week. The first word is clothed. And that was, we talked on yesterday in a scrambled message. I'm sorry about yesterday's video. I just couldn't seem to get it together. Um, and then today, also, we're going to talk on the word clothed. And then the next uh, day is fine linen. The next day is fine linen. Then on uh, Thursday, we're going to talk about white. White. And then on Friday and Saturday, we talk about clean. So we've got scriptures that back all this stuff up. These are words that we can plant. These are words that you can meditate on. You can literally meditate on the word clothed. And uh, when you start to meditate, the Holy Spirit will take you into the Bible and it'll show you different uh, scenarios and different stories and different pictures uh, of what it, what it means to be clothed. So uh, the first thing you're gonna notice when you see the word clothed, it means to cover to cover up, to cover. These clothes cover my body. That's what clothes actually means in the Bible. That's actually, the definition of clothes is actually uh, Psalm 65.13. Let's go over there, 65.13. I'm gonna bounce around on a few different verses here, uh, but it's all, all under that same heading, clothed, and all under today's title, 65.13 is where we get the t uh, definition of the word clothed. Yesterday I talked about how some people, uh, they think the word of God is so simple, and it is, that they just breeze over certain words. They want to have some kind of a fancy doctrine. Here I'm talking about the word clothed. Like, why talk about being clothed? Because it's very, very important. One of the ways it's important is to understand that every word Every word, clothed is a word, is pure. Every word is important. Jesus says, I am the word of God, singular word. So clothed is a single word. It's important to God. If it's important to God, it needs to be important to us. Okay, clothed means to cover. We are covered under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, what covers us and washes us of our sin, our iniquity. Amen. So let's go to 65.13. It says here, the pastures are clothed, the pastures are clothed with flocks. The valleys are also are covered over with corn. That's where it is right there. Clothed means covered over. I'll put that in the video here. It means covered over. And that's what uh, 
when you well yesterday's verse on Genesis 3:21, uh, Adam and Eve, uh, the few verses above that, uh, they uh, uh, put together fig leaves and they made aprons out of these fig leaves, and they tried to makeshift a covering without talking to God first. And God says, no, that's not going to work. I mean, I don't know what he said exactly. <laughs> it's not written down. But uh, he said, that's not going to work. So he clothed Adam and Eve with the skins of animals. So there must be something there. Skins of animals versus the, uh, uh, the uh, fig leaves. So that also relates to Cain and Abel. Cain offered produce as his offering. When God says, I don't want produce, I want animals. And Abel offered animals, a certain kind. And uh, so by doing what God wants you to do, you get a blessing from God. The blessing of the Lord comes on your life. When you disobey God and you become rebellious, you actually become an idol worshiper and you begin to idol, idolize yourself and exalt yourself. And that's why Satan told Eve, he says, you're a God. You're going to be like a God. But once you eat that fruit, you're going to be like a God, knowing good and evil. It's really sad. So God had to step in and do something. One of the things he did is he clothed Adam and Eve. They were clothed before. They're clothed again. I don't I'm going to talk about that. People argue me about that. That's too bad how people argue. Anyways, uh, clothed. So, uh, Man, oh man, it is really windy. I got my hat cinched down pretty tight. So before we get to the part number, let's go to another verse, uh, Romans 4, 7. Romans 4, 7 will give us another insight into the word clothes, 4, 7. Uh, 4, 7, where is it at? I marked it, I thought. 4, 7, is that what it is? Romans 4, verse 7. I went too far because of the wind. 4, no, oh man, sorry. Uh, yeah, here it is. I thought I marked it. I guess I did. Uh, verse 7, Romans chapter 4, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Sins are covered. That's what I told you said right there. Iniquity means sin, and our sins are forgiven, and that forgiveness is covered over by the blood of the Lamb. That's why when you don't have the blood of the Lamb on you, you are naked. That's what happens when people reproach uh, the throne of God, and they bend their knee, and they say, Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh, they're going to find out they're naked. They're not clothed. And, uh, oh man, it is windy, windy, windy. So that's another good verse from 4-7. Uh, let's go to one more, 1 Peter 4-8. 1 Peter 4-8. 1 Peter 4-8. 1 Peter 4.8. Here we go. Where's 1 Peter 4.8? I had all these marked, but the wind's blown all my markers out. 1 Peter 4.8. Oh, man. 1 Peter 4.8. Sorry. It is hard to open this. 1 Peter 4.8. 1 right. Peter 4.8. You see what just happened? No, you didn't see that. that. So she was steadying her phone like this. She walked right into the camera. It's amazing. People are addicted to their cell phones. Addicted. It's an addiction. It's an addiction. All getting ready for the Antichrist. All getting ready for the Antichrist. Just like tattoos are all getting ready for the Antichrist. Uh, First Peter, is that what it is? First Peter 4 8. 4 8. Where is it at? I must have marked it in my other Bible. Sorry. Anyways, first eight. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Charity shall cover. That's what God did to Adam and Eve. His love for his creation. Instead of killing them right there on the spot. Go make, go make another set of people. He loved on them and covered them anyways. That is an example of the almighty God's love for you. There was nothing that said he couldn't do away with the Adam and Eve and make another person. Nothing. He could have done that very, very easily. He's God. It's all his. This is all his. 
But he didn't do that. He demonstrated his word in the Garden of Eden. Charity covered over Adam and Eve. Charity. 1 Corinthians 13 is the book on charity. Modern Bibles take out the word charity. Sorry, man. You almost blew away. <laughs> and I got everything locked down. So anyways, uh, are you still here? I hope you're still here. Boy, I tell you, that really got me there. I don't know if I bent the bent it or not. Oh well. I tell you, all my stuff out here on the street really gets tore up. After about a year, year and a half, it becomes really a mess. So that charity covered over uh, the, that iniquity, that sin. And uh, so, lo and behold, charity is such a powerful word. It's such a godly word. It's, such a, it's a word that God wants to use because it has, it's so wide and deep that uh, modern Bibles took it out. They don't want to use the word charity. They want to use the word love. Love. God knows what the word love is. God, Bible says God is love. But when it talks about a different kind of love, he uses the word charity. And in charity, is it's different than love. Read 1 Corinthians 13. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, that thing blew over. Man, oh man. Glad I, caught it. I got it all cinched down to I got my banner here I got rocks and I got water bottle holding this thing down <laughs> hallelujah anyways uh, uh, yeah so anyways there's that so I'm gonna keep on going real fast here so let me go back up now to Matthew 631 Matthew 631 I got that one Mark but it'll blow away in just a second Matthew 631 631 says therefore take no thought saying what shall we eat what shall we drink? What with all shall we be clothed? What's going to cover us? That's really what they're asking here. What is, what's going to cover us? What's going to cover us? What is going to cover us? So on the very first Passover, uh, the doorpost was covered over by the blood of the Lamb. When the angel uh, came by, to, he was taking all the firstborn uh, children, boys, I think. Uh, he passed by that covering okay that's that cover. even a stranger who was under the covering was protected was saved how about that that's pretty cool so uh there, this whole verse from 24 all the way to 34 those 10 verses here uh, in matthew chapter 6 all relate or could relate and can relate to the word covered covered when you think about what covered actually means so covered is a very powerful word and the title of our Sunday prayer letter is clothed or covered in fine linen fine linen is righteousness righteousness of God that is our holy all righteousness actually means true holiness true holiness so we're covered in true holiness we're clothed covered in fine linen true holiness white and clean Revelation 19 14 very powerful teaching what we're doing this week I hope that you take some of these verses and kind of meditate in them okay so let's pray Lord I thank you that we can come out here in the high high wind and still do a noisy video and uh, still get the job done and uh, we thank you Lord that uh, you take care of us no matter what the situation is and we give you all the glory for what's happening in Jesus name amen and amen so uh, let me roll through here so to how do you apply what I just talked about being covered? How, what's the takeaway or a recap? And that is, uh, bring a coat. <laughs> I didn't bring a coat. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I'm all right. So uh, the takeaway is kind of what I seem like I normally do. And that is, uh, look at the words or the scriptures that we talked about in this video, in this sermon, this message, and then pull those out and highlight them or set them apart and then ask the Holy Spirit, where is it that you want me to meditate in? And he'll kind of direct you to something to meditate on. And you focus on that scripture, those words, and you meditate and to uh, dwell in that word, to make your home, your abode in that word. And in that, the Holy Ghost will move into you and teach you what he wants you to know. It's really important to be following and obeying the Spirit of God. 
That's who's here with us now is the Spirit of God. Jesus is in heaven at the right hand of God, interceding for his saints. The Spirit of God is here with us. So take advantage of the Spirit of God. Use him. He's here for us. He's not going to speak on his own. He's going to say what Jesus is telling him to say. So that's one way of taking away, uh, you know, a takeaway or recap, okay? And then uh, I hope you got that. I hope you're hearing what I'm saying here. So one more uh, thing. Tomorrow I'm going to be at 30th and Arapahoe over by King Super's gas station. 30th and Arapahoe. <laughs> I don't know what it's going to be like tomorrow. I think it's going to rain tomorrow. But uh, that's where I'm going to be tomorrow. So uh, that's the end of the video because I'm going to wrap this up. This is really hard to do this video. I hope there's something here you can kind of glean from this and uh, take it and use it in your life. If not, I'm just an example, okay? Uh, if it's windy, you can still come out. If it's cold, you can still come out. If it's blistering hot, you can still come out. And like yesterday, because I had a stomach ache and wasn't feeling good at all, I still came out and I stayed for five hours. Five hours. I didn't go home. I didn't get home till six o'clock that yesterday, last night. So, it's always possible. So get after it, okay? God bless you, man. I love you very much. Take care. Bye bye.